Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 96 of the All Dolphins podcast. That's the number we're up to. In the- also the I. The- did I ruin your fun? Did you- no, that's okay. How did you know? That's exactly where I'm going. 2007 fourth round pick out of Utah. Big dude with some mobility whose career got off to a very slow start until he had a come to Jesus moment with head coach Tony Sperano. And then apparently he was told in no uncertain terms, get your, you know what together, or it's going to be a short NFL career. And he did, and he turned it around and became one hell of a space eating defensive tackle. Paul Soli, I very, uh, very um, tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, That's not the reason why he turned it around. However, I, I shall not share the reason why he turned it around if he ever chooses to share the reason why he turned it around. But um, it, it it just reminds you, be careful about the people you surround yourself with and the team that you have, um, because a lot of things can go left when you don't have a strong support staff around you. But he did turn himself around. And Paul Soledad was also my motivation back in the day for getting fit. And I need to get that motivation again. Yeah, because, I mean, he got leaner. He was still big. Yeah, he was still big, but he moved like a cat. So um, he is the true definition of what a nose tackle looks like and should play like. Uh, It's okay, but it's not necessarily good in terms of what they have right now. Right. And if you remember correctly, that 2007 draft was kind of booty cheeks. Um, John Beck? Uh, who was the first pick of that first draft? pick was Ted Ginn Jr., who oh, did man. wind up having a pretty long NFL career, but was never a ninth overall pick type of guy, especially when they could have had uh, – that's the year I think they could have Darrell Revis. They could have had Patrick They could Harris. also have Brady Quinn, which is why the fans booed him. And Brady Quinn happened to be the worst quarterback that I've ever seen in the Dolphins uniform. I'm just saying. Um, and, of course, we, we could mention the uh, – we've got to turn our, turn our thumbs up this way. The most yeah. <laughs> uncomfortable, like, no, it wasn't a press conference. It was Cam Cameron talking to fans at a draft party. Um, and woof. Who yeah. Uh, John, Ted Ginn, John Beck, Samson Satelli, who was had a decent career. Lorenzo Booker from Florida State in the third round. Journeyman. Paul Soliai, Reagan Mawia, Drew Mor- Juggernaut. Mor- yeah, the Juggernaut. Drew Mor- Mormino. Okay. Kelvin Smith, uh, Brandon Fields, who had a pretty substantial Brady. career, and a, a, um, Abraham Wright. Okay. Yeah, that was a that was a mediocre draft. It wasn't as horrible as I thought. Okay, today is Monday. Pretty damn bad, though. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. Today, Monday, October 9th, the day after the Dolphins' 31-16 win against the New York Giants, and there was some news today, some of it, some of it worrisome, to say the least. That involves running back Devon A. Chain, who Mike McDaniel indicated is getting his knee evaluated. Didn't say which knee, didn't say when the injury occurred. However, if you were online yesterday and following certain certain sites or certain accounts, you would have seen a video on his last carry of the game where he got tackled and his right knee kind of, or his right leg kind of got bent backward. I mean, inward, I should say. Um, I could have sworn I saw one one angle of it where he grimaced at the time. He jogged off the field, looked fairly normal. Interestingly enough, he was on the field again for the Dolphins' last third down of the game. The third and six were, were two or three short to the right to Raheem Mostert, and he broke a tackle, gained eight yards, and then it's kneeled on time. Uh, he was in the left slot, kind of slid over to the left side, not very fast, but it wasn't like he was limping or anything. And then I guess he indicated to coaches or trainers after the game, there's a problem. Yeah, I saw him after the game and, and there didn't seem to be a problem, but, you know, not anything substantial or major. Um, usually when they are substantial or major, they're not hanging around in the locker room. They're getting evaluated. So we shall see. Um, I am not too concerned, but it seems to be I'm the only one. Maybe. I don't know. Well, it's concerning because he's been so damn good. I mean, 
Yeah, he's been he's the second leading rusher in the NFL behind Christian McCaffrey, and he's really only done it in three games because you can't really count what he did the first two games. Um, he's got a ridiculous yards per carry average, which Jesus is oh my god, 12.1. So yeah, he's clearly the front runner for rookie of the year. But is he though? Who else would do it? Dude, there, I mean, there, 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 there are other guys. Pakua and the Nakua. The second leading rusher in the NFL. I understand. Pakua and Nakua, who's got like numbers up the wazoo for the Rams, and including a game winning touchdown in overtime against Indianapolis. You got CJ Stroud, a quarterback, at a time when a lot of rookie quarterbacks struggle, and he's actually playing really, really well for Houston. So he's absolutely in the mix. Absolutely. But just you're making it sound like he's, he's like I mean, running we're... away with it. We're competing with the Christian McCaffrey. I understand that. Seven, Again, touch, he, uh, seven he, touchdowns? Yeah, if he keeps scoring a 50, 70-yard uh, touchdown every game, yeah. But and again, this is me, again, just bringing some nuance and not everything is just completely – what's going on? Yeah. But, but if Omar wants to say he's – I don't know what term you use. To me, there, there – it's runner? a race. Sorry? Front runner? Maybe one one these one awards be. go to winning teams usually. Are are the Houston Texans going to be a winning team? Um, two and three. Yeah, but they're Houston. But anyway, oh, no. um, hey, I as I said again, I'm not worried about it, and here's the reason why I'm not worried about it. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a poupard controversial comment, so okay. buckle up. All right. You want to know why? If you if you had me rank why the Dolphins have a record setting, pace setting, ridiculously good offense, and yeah. most people will say it's because of the speed. No, I'm gonna tell you it's because it got it's the blocking. And this offensive line, how many times do you see all these breakaway runs where there are two, if not three, offensive linemen 20 to 30 yards down the field? blocking for somebody on a lot of these plays the offensive line is creating caverns of holes Devon A. Chain on his touchdown run I'm not sure he got touched correct I agree it, 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 it's not like these guys are just bouncing off people balancing themselves and then saying oh man it's open field no it's they're clean to the second level and they got one guy to miss. And understand, it's partly the scheme. And I think Mike McDaniels, I am ready, officially ready to say, play calling genius. I'll I'll let it go. I I will. I held on to it for as long as I could. Uh, you know, I don't like to give away the genius label. I do not like that. But I'm pretty sure when you're basically got in your hands the best offense in NFL history. And truthfully speaking, unless they get a number of injuries, they're probably not going to slow down. Well, uh, but, uh, I'm going to do it again. Damn it. I'm going to do it again. I always do this. Let them get more than 400 yards against a respectable team before wow. we go there. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are the car chargers not a respectable team? Not defense. No, no. The defense okay. is brutal. Buffalo and New England are the two respectable defenses that they have played so far. And, and New England's defense will not be respectable in the rematch because they don't have Judon and Christian Gonzalez anymore. And in those two games, they didn't reach 400 yards. All so right. before, before we start throwing best offense in NFL history, statistically through five games, absolutely. But before we start throwing, because we were throwing may, maybe not quite that kind of hyperbole, but similar praise last year after three games or even after 11 games. And it then. I didn't say the yeah. same. I said that kind of hyperbole. Uh, and then through 11 games, and then it kind of went south a little bit. So to me, the big step to, to accomplish, like if, if they light up, for example, either the Eagles, even the Chiefs, who actually have a very good defense, even though it's the focus oh, that much on the homes. Bad and the boy. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. If they light up one of those two teams, then like by all means, let, by all means, go right ahead. But that needs to be done. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But but McDaniel cannot have his genius label stripped. I've given it to him. Oh, 
I, I gave it. I gave it to him before you did. I believe. I yeah, I, I was not willing to. The hater over here. The hater over here was like all over. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the way and the way they stretch teams vertically, and then okay, you're gonna play me vertically. Okay, I stretch you horizontally. Which way do you want me to stretch you? I could go this way. I could go this way. It's masterful. But it's and, part. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say it's part of everything working like this everything and that includes to what quarterback it includes the offensive line the receivers the tight ends is part of the offensive line's abilities that they got you got guys who can move and mm -hmm. you talk about like the first play of the game the end around to a chain where you got offensive lineman seven yards downfield and he doesn't get touched until he reaches the second level well the 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 play fake moved a couple of giants players the wrong way that opens up the field and you got the, the speedy, the mo very mobile offensive line getting on in space and a chain speed does the rest. It's like, it's, this is all working. This, in is, this is like the evolution. It's like the marriage of the RPO offense and the West coast offense. And it's taking it to a new level and new heights. And you could tell defensive coordinators, like, Holy crap. Like, you know, um, who was the defensive coordinator last week? Who was like, yeah, just keep me waking me up like a baby every two oh, hours. Rick Martindale. Yeah, and you know, I don't think he was exaggerating because it's a lot. It's it's really truly a lot. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I... and to handle their misdirections, to handle you know a lot of their packages where it was going deep. It's max protection. It's like you can. You 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 can pick your poison, but you can't take everything. Like and even even their their fast package or whatever he wants to call it. Um fast 21. Fast 21, where they've got Raheem and A Chain and uh and and Hill and Waddle on the field together. Um with either, yeah, with with Durham, you know, oh like what what do you what what do you do with that? Yeah, like no. It's a lot of lot of guys to look at, um, but yeah, that to me is like losing because again, A chain gives you like he's another home run guy, and when on a team with plenty of home run guys, so it's not like they're they're, they're going to be lacking speed if somehow he has to go on the shelf for a while. But again, having yeah. just one more of those guys just makes that offense. Oh wait, hold on. Let, let, and and we will address the fact that Jeff Wilson is coming off IR. He's probably going to be practicing for a couple of weeks before he's actually eventually cleared to play. And let's not forget that Jeff Wilson was the number two back on this team, but there was Savan Ahmed who, you know, despite what fan want to say, and please address that, please go ahead. Uh, fans want to say how ridiculous of us to even compare Savan Ahmed to Devon Etan. Um, and Devon says, my teammates say we look alike. The only way they tell us apart on coaches' film is our shoes. So trust me, S Savan can get it done too, can get busy too. And I oftentimes think about him every once in a while when I see this ridiculous 12.1 yards per carry average and think to myself, boy, Savan must be thinking, man, I'm missing out on that opportunity right there. Because truthfully speaking, and yes, he's ridiculously fast. At, but can we not pretend like he's not seven yards downfield before somebody even has the chance to touch him? Well, they agree. And every running back would love that opportunity. Yeah, and and the difference is maybe on a on what was H Chan's touchdown run yesterday? Let's say seventy six yards. That what it was or 74 yards, okay, Ahmed gets caught at, at some point and it's a 50-yard run instead because he's not as straight straight line speed as fast as HN, few are. Um, but it's not like a, like Ahmed wouldn't be able to do similar things. I don't know. I want to be careful how I phrase things because some people get under feelings very, very easily. Oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're disrespecting him. So, you know, hey. Yeah, correct. It, 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 and... Every honestly, and this is where I say the offensive line, they deserve the majority of the credit. One, they came into the season as the weakest link on the team. Not having Teron Armstead, Isaiah Wynn, 
has handled his business. Gave up a sack last. Gave up a sack last Sunday. He yeah. did. Mm -hmm. To Timber. I mean, last Sunday against Buffalo or yesterday. Yesterday. Uh, then the Lamb's the one who got beat on the sack. Yeah, last. I'm saying last Sunday, meaning the one that just passed. That just that happened. was Ken, that was Kendall Lamb who got beat up for the sack. Yeah, who did I say it was? You said Isaiah Wynn. Oh man, I'm sorry. I mean Kendall Lamb. Yeah, yeah. no, my bad. Um, that's all right. Um, and you know, with the exception of one guy, everybody's performing pretty well on the offensive line. Um, so the and they're what, guy, who, what guy's not performing well on the offensive line? The one that who was a backup for one game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, harsh, dude. Harsh. I, did he perform well? But he's, a, but he's a backup. I mean, I know. I said everybody's performing well except for one guy. Okay. Where's the lie? Where's the lie? All the starters have been, have been performing well. You couldn't have said it like that. All the starters have been performing well. Well, backups are important people because they matter. And your offensive line is only as good as your weakest link. Steve, where's the lie? That's some deep stuff right there. It, it, is it the truth? Um, okay. But I'm I, more I'm more of everything's working together like a machine. That's everything is working together as a machine. And it 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 begins in practice. Um, you know, we don't get to watch all of it anymore, but um I I, I just I was thinking back to the days when people were like, Oh, in training camp, this offense isn't looking good. Oh my god, this offense is struggling, and I, you know. And I'm not bragging about it, but I looked at it as okay, they're experimenting with a lot of things. They're trying to figure out what can work, what and truthfully speaking, we didn't see as much motion as we're seeing now. So right. that was that's just that's just each week preparation for the opponent. And I think and what I've always found interesting is Mike McDaniel always comes in and he says, They did nothing of what we expected them to do, but our guys adjusted and figured it out. And I'm like, all right, cool. Um, so they always come in with these expectations for how defenses will play them, and then defenses change up and switch up how they play them, and they figure it out anyway. So props to them, props to the coaching, the play calling, the preparation, um, the execution, the quarterbacking, the protection, the second-level blocking, the wide receiver blocking, Alec Ingle, Durham Smite, everybody – you guys are working in concert together and it's a masterpiece right now. Um, yeah. Well, and yeah. Mike McDaniel always says, it's not about our opponents. It's about us and how we prepare. Okay. Don't, 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 don't say, don't not say that all coaches say that. Don't do that. That coach, that coaches say it's about us and, and, and executing what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Are you serious? Dude, how long you been doing this? Are you serious? Come on. No. Come on now. Come on. Brian Flores never said it. Adam Gates never said oh, it. Oh, absolutely. He said it. Uh, going back to training. Come on. Um, going back to the, the training camp and the, and the offense not looking the same. Here's the other thing, too, is training camp, they're not going. They're not going as fast as they're going now. That makes a big difference, too, because in training camp, also – the the idea is you focus more on getting the things right. Once the regular season start starts, it's you're getting the things right and you're doing it fast. It's both, and that's when that's when it makes a difference, and that's when also you see that that stupid speed the Dolphins have really come into play as you're giving me the tilted head, like I said something crazy. Are you still are you still yeah. that I question your? It's not. It's not about the defense. It's about us. I mean, it's no, no, no. It's not. It's not about the opponent. It's correct. About... It's, it's pure coach speak. Pure coach speak. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Jeff Wilson Jr. The the yeah. There was a uh, report from uh, Josh Mosier and Josh Mosier from from Drew Rosenhaus that he's expecting to be cleared for practice this week. Uh, Robert Starting Jones need him. Window. Correct. Robert Jones and Needham are going to start their second week. And Mike McDaniel said there were no setbacks after their first week last, the first week of practice last week. Maybe they're back. Um, I watched both of them last week. They're not close. Okay. All right. They're not close. Do you make, are, are you, is it possible you think that one of them is going to wind up, okay, you're staying on IR or on PUP? No, it's not. But, okay. but they're, they're, they're both. 
not where they need to be to be playing in a game. And Nick, you know, Nick's got a lot of work to do and a lot of conditioning work to do to play 40 snaps in a game, um, cutting, movement, lateral skills. Nick's got a lot of work to do. And Robert Jones, I'm not sure he's fully healthy. Okay. You, you see him see him all. And, and, hey, Lester Cotton isn't fully healthy. He's battling an ankle injury. He's still playing and ready and active. Um, I, I would love to have Robert Jones active because, to me, in my opinion, um, and this is no slander on anybody else, but now he becomes the sixth offensive lineman. You're calculating. Uh, sorry? I said you're calculating in your head. Well, I'm I'm thinking well I, I, outside of Kendall Lamb. Well, okay, that's what that's what I'm saying. No, I don't I agree, I agree with you. Um now I was I, I had something in my head I told you. Oh, here and here's the thing to me, and as you mentioned that to me, it's a lot more significant to get Robert Jones back than Nick Needham. No offense to superstar. And I'll what? explain and I'll explain why. And I'll explain why. Nick Needham, as I've said many, many times, and you can argue with me however you'd like. This is a debate and all cool to me is much more effective as a, in the slot as an outside cornerback. The Dolphins already have a very good slot cornerback in Cater Co, who, who also, in my very humble opinion, is a lot better in the slot than he is outside. Okay. So, and then Eli Apple's coming off a game when, again, it was the Giants, no offense to the Giants, but he His played former the, team that drafted him. Correct. 13th overall. I don't remember the year, but 13th overall. Um, Played very, very well. Same year as uh, 2016, same year as uh, Xavier. Okay, sounds about right. Uh, then he was on the 13th pick. Or was, no, because the, the 13th pick originally belonged to the Dolphins before they moved up. No, let me see. No, in 2016, the Dolphins made the 13th pick. That's when they got Laramie Tunsil. So he wasn't okay. a 13th pick or it wasn't 2016. Anyway, I digress. Okay. So... I'm not sure that Nick Needham comes comes back and is fully healthy. Let's say if it gets to that point and immediately tenth gets, pick. Okay, in 2016. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure Nick Needham comes back and immediately gets a role on on defense. To me, <gasps> he would be a depth piece. Oh, and dude. sorry, sorry. And I think Robert Jones is more valuable because because I think he's overall maybe a better player. You disrespecting Nick Needham's name. It's a superstar. And what did you make? The other kind of newsy item was Mike McDaniel's comment about Jalen Ramsey, which yeah. sounded very, very encouraging, except if you really analyze it, what does it mean exactly? We saw him running. Correct. He, we saw him running. And he looked fine running. I mean, the, the running isn't the difficult part. It's the cutting part. And he's not ready to go. And McDaniel pointed out he's only running for us, running from us, which was a joke. Um, and he was running inside the locker room so he could hear the halftime speech. It, but it was running, which is significant. I, I, I expect him to be running on a treadmill. Is he on the field cutting? No, he's not. Um, and they're going to be cautious about it which means he probably won't be cleared to do any of that activity until november that's just being smart about things um which this organization is ultra cautious and smart about injuries so the, if the goal is to get him back on the field in december he's probably not going to be cleared until november he just gave an update and said he's he's progressing well and we've known that for quite a while no correct but he also said the last part of it is like He's a special breed, and he is on the positive side of return for sure. Which, again, I'm not quite sure how to interpret that. It almost kind of reads to me like it may be a little sooner than expected, or could it mean maybe there was perhaps some doubt before, now there's absolutely no doubt. Um, it, was, it was a tad cryptic. We know he's coming back in December. Maybe he gets there the end of November. Like we'll 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 see. And and I I was thinking about it the other day. Um, one of my many thoughts that that come through yeah. my head. Oh, be I, scary here. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when when I think about think about the team and think about all the things that they can actually do when Jalen Ramsey comes back, and I know it's you know Vic Fangio's dream and and uh, and all these things and and. 
they will be, if Jalen Ramsey is back at 80%, they will be a much better team just because uh that happened that third cornerback spot happens to be one of their one of their weaknesses one one of their soft spots in on their team so let's hope that Jalen Ramsey doesn't suffer a setback continues to progress and let's also not rush him back because that 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 could lead to a setback and if we're going to be fair when it comes to the third cornerback play that outside cornerback opposite x the better the pass rush the easier the job is oh yeah and oh yeah, it was great yesterday. And I mean, the Dolphins completely took advantage of that Giants offense. I don't own. I don't. I don't. Mm -mm. Like everybody wants. Everybody wants these pats on the back for pass rush and seven sacks and all these pressure creepy hits and pressures against a practice squad line. No, you cannot get a pat dude, on the back for that. You, you dude, you they, they can get a. You, they can get a. I can't. Why are you so? Why are you so resistant to give praise, Omar? That's really. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, again, no. for that no. particular game, what more could they have done against? Again, they 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 were given a favorable matchup and they took advantage of it. This is what they were supposed to do yesterday. Now, the, obviously, they need to do it against a better offensive line. We're not saying it's a good pass rush just because of what happened yesterday, but for that particular game, it produced. What 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 amazed me about that game when I, I noticed this rewatching the game, more twisting and stunting. Like the whole season, I've been like, where are the twists and the stunts? Where where's the games on the defensive line? And I don't see them. And okay, you do it against a team that's just piss poor offensive line wise. Why don't you do it against a real team? Make things a little bit more complicated as opposed to these head on blocks that you're yeah. taking on. But that you got to defeat, and I, you know, we shall see. It, we it, shall. May, it may be that they figured they'll get picked up because there are there are a couple of examples, and it's like the Giants all old linemen were like clueless. Oh, oh, guys are, are twisting. Who am I supposed to pick up now? Oh, okay, you got him. No, no you got him. Oh, there he goes. Um, <laughs> pretty of, much. I mean, yeah, yeah. the and, and the Dolphins are very good at it, which is why why don't you do it? Correct. Like, but this is what happens when you have a line that plays together for a while. I mean, generally speaking, the communication or the the knowledge of who of you know switching guys is really uh, should not be rocket science for an offensive line. Speaking of rewatching the game, which I did as well, the second two interception, absolutely without question, his hand hit Connor Williams' helmet as he was pass blocking and pushed back by Dexter Lawrence, which is what caused the ball to float over Jalen Waddle for the pick. So and you're then, calling Tua a liar? No, here's what I'm going to say, because Tua, after the, the game, said, I believe the quote was literally that, no, I did, you know, my, my, my hand wasn't hit or something like that. Tua is a very, very, very good team leader. Okay, he's one of those guys who's going to spread the credit and he's going to take the blame, right? And if he says, yeah, I hit my hand on, on, on a helmet, then the, the attention is going to go to Connor Williams and why the two his hand hit his helmet. And that's going to bring some heat from the outside on Connor Williams. And two was like, no need for that. I'll own it. I'll take it. No big deal. I can't speak for you on that one, but that's that's my th and and I, not that he would admit to it, but that's my theory on that. But absolutely, his hand hit, hit Connor Williams' helmet. He's so honest. I can't believe that he would lie. But he also, he's also, as part of his growth as a player and his development as a quarterback, he takes responsibility. He takes for... more and more ownership, and like I said, he he's become, he's always deflecting credit. And he's always taking blame when things go south. He took a little credit for the play that led to the touchdown. Uh, <laughs> he's like, hey, hey, you could have just kept that to yourself, to it. Now, <laughs> we, now we're calling our own plays. Like, <laughs> he wanted to be called a play calling genius, I mean. <laughs> that was such a weird yeah, like, no. and I'm still gonna write about it and still gonna address it because I think it's still it's part of the evolution of quarterbacks. Your coach and and keep in mind, he says this all the time. He doesn't like Mike McDaniel's play calling. He always is. He always is like, yeah, even though I don't like the play, 
you know, we call it, we run it, and he's he's trying to set up. So he's admitted sure, like sure, he likes the results. Yeah, he's admitted so many times that he doesn't like the play that that was called. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm saying to myself like, damn, are you challenging Mike? Like you think you can call plays better? And Mike obviously feels that way. And, and to a, just basically, he, he says he miss misheard him. Of course. <laughs> that and then Mike McDaniel's basically like. Is that the story we're telling? <laughs> and he does. I, I don't think Mike's ego. It's not like Adam Gaze's ego. I think they're totally fine with Tua. Such different personalities. Yeah, yeah, they're totally fine. He, Mike's totally fine with Tua saying, "Yeah, I don't like that." Because understand, and people got to understand when they come up with a game plan, the quarterback has a lot of autonomy and say, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Let's put this in. Let's during the week. Like, I don't feel comfortable with that. They're building it around what he likes and what he's comfortable with. So he saw a play in that situation that was clearly better than the play that Mike called. And he called it himself. And I think that that's the elevation of when you enter that elite stratosphere of quarterbacks you can do that and you get the license to do that. Now, obviously it's got to work more than it doesn't work, but he, you know, he, he and, and Mike, Mike kind of hinted like that's when, you know, a guy is, you know, fully arrived and is, is, is ready to handle, handle more. And I'm excited about what could be more. I mean, right now they're a pace setting offense. I don't see them slowing down anytime soon unless they start to take hits on the offensive line or Tua gets injured because they've got so much depth at running back. And I think they're okay at wide receiver, especially with the addition of play Claypool, who I don't think plays for another three weeks, but he that long. No, 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 no. Bro, he can't, he doesn't know. He doesn't know how to speak Spanish in Spain. They can give him, they can give him a, a an, an easy package of donde está el baño and stuff like that. He he's got he he'd have to be killing it on special teams to to get to get active. Who's he going to be active over? Don't say it. You know exactly who. Don't he, you say know it. Exactly. He had a great game. Who? He. He had a great game. First of all, he didn't catch a pass. Second of all, I, I don't I don't recall on tape seeing. Oh, you're talking about you're talking game. about Robbie Chosen. Okay, yeah, who did you think I was talking about? Cedric Wilson. No, Wilson had a good game. Absolutely. No, he'd be he'd be active over Robbie Chosen. Like they bring something different. Okay, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Can uh, I can I say something about another play call that I didn't like? And again, I didn't like any of the red zone play calls. I, no, that, that's that's not what I'm. I was gonna, I was gonna mention. And again, this is nitpicking. They won by 15 points, but again, third and one, shotgun throw a pass. Oh, gee. Jesus! Is it is it, what's the right term? Oy vey? Yeah, I don't. Need oy vey, to... yes, oy vey. I mean, just, um, and yeah. again, it it didn't work. It actually was a completion. Except the waddle it was it was running like across the across the field and wound up with going towards the the line of scrimmage when he caught the ball and he got tackled behind the line. Can we even? I mean, can we get some first downs rushing in those situations? That's um, what Jeff Wilson for. Well, let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, uh, and I, I'd like to see Chris Brooks get a carry in those. Obviously, obviously, the dude showed he's physical because he put somebody on his ass. Uh, with the block, I don't remember who it was, but I mean, it he was, put that dude on his yeah, block. but you know what? It was a cut block, and I really don't like cut blocks. It was not a cut block. Watch the re I'll and I'll, sh I'll show you the clip. It literally blocked mano a mano up high, and he drove him to the ground. We must be looking at a different play because yeah. I saw him cut block a guy, and I was just like, I don't like it. No, I, I would not, I don't, I would never glorify a cut block. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm with you on those. I'm not a fan of those. Yeah, I I I don't I don't know that play that you're talking about, but I did see a cut block, and I was just like, oh, that's a little dirty. I don't like it. But hey, you got to do what you got to do in the NFL, especially when a guy's got 50 pounds on you. Understood. But again, the play I'm talking about, if that didn't show the guy can be physical, 
physical enough to, I don't know, maybe give him, give him a third and one carry. He's he's massive. He's huge. Correct. Uh, sticking goal in front of him. Um, you know? Yeah, we got, they, 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 I don't like, and, and to piggyback on what you're saying, I don't like the short yardage stuff and I don't like the red zone stuff. I think the red zone plays are trash. It's, and you know, I'm, I'm nitpicking on a record setting offense that's clearly converting like 70% of the red zone opportunities, but they, they require so many pinpoint accurate passes and so many tight window passes and red zone is always going to be tight window, but, but would love for you to be able to run it in the red zone. I'd love for you to be able to, um, you know, ha- work a little easier in the red zone. Everything in the red zone yesterday was covered. It's just some of it converted to touchdowns. Um, and then there was a most run. But and, and no, let me correct myself. Not red zone. Goal to go. In the goal to go area, their work is just not for me. Okay, well, but here's the thing. If we're going to be honest about it, on the on the first drive on the, the touchdown, beautiful throw by Tua on the on on the touchdown play after rolling out on the on the first down. However, he had Waddle open in the end zone, except he didn't loft it, and that allowed Xavier McKinney to jump and get his hand on it. Um, and if you remember, in the second half, they just ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. I mean, they they, they had a first and goal from the eight, Mostert for six, Mostert for two touchdown. I mean, it wasn't even, and maybe that was a situation of the Giants defense being gassed and they couldn't do that Absolutely. in the first quarter, but they could have tried. I mean, that tends to be the default that they go immediately pass on first and goal. Well, now they got the best offense running offense, passing game and offense running game. So this is the goal. So correct. So they, they should mix it up. You got, you got the number one ranking and both mix it up. Okay. That's going to do it for today, Monday, October 9th. We don't need to go through all the spiel, like download, subscribe, tell a friend, uh, we're on the fans for sports network under Miami Dolphins Insider. Tomorrow is Tuesday for our weekly behind enemy lines where we'll get to find out everything there is to know about those those awesome 0 6 Carolina Panthers. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>